Hello everyone, and this week we are going to be talking about the uh, planning and preparing for a convention. And today I'm going to talk about the people that would normally try to plan out a convention. And they're not always the perfect people, but they're the perfect for the situation. So uh, here we go. The first thing they need to be is big fans. And by big fans, I mean they are willing to go and do the things uh, to help whatever it is move forward. So they've already proven their loyalty. They've, for uh, arcade uh, collectors, they've already collected a bunch of games and they want others to get into it and they want people to play their games. So they, they're already in. They're already part of the inner circle of people who are just really into this subject. So they feel that they kind of want to spread this. And they also have lots of connections. And these connections are really, really important because if you try to do any type of planning, which we're going to be talking about in the next two, uh, next two videos, we're going to see that you need tons of knowledge. You need to know a lot of people. Because if you can't do something, you need to know somebody who can. Let's say you want to advertise your convention. Well, you know, you might be an IT guy and you may not have those skills. So you need to know somebody who does know how to do it and is willing to do it. So they make a, a small circle of people and they say, okay, we've got enough connections, we can do this. And they kind of interconnect with each other and with, uh, with uh, whoever else they can. And in every single little circle that they've got, they kind of reconnect with uh, a bunch of other people who aren't as connected or aren't as into the subject that they're talking about. And they have to have a desire to spread their idea. Uh, for arcade collectors or car collectors, they just want people to see their cars or their games. And they're, this is a really interesting thing for them. For uh, video game collectors, it's they want to show off their game. And it's usually, you know, this is our chance this is our chance to spread the idea that we are in this inner circle and we want to spread it to the outer circle. The, the people who aren't into this subject so much that they're in our little circle here. Uh, you know, spread it as far as we can. We're, we're just going to hit as many people as we can. We're going to spread this idea. And <clears throat> next up, they need to be able to fix problems. And here's two guys working on a problem on the... Oh, something magic uh, pinball table. And I, I wasn't able to find a really good one, but a really good picture. But um, it's absolutely fascinating how uh, pinball machines are, uh, they're just connected with wire after wire after wire. And I don't know if you can hear this, but somebody's um, uh, vacuum is going off somewhere in my neighborhood. So if you hear that, I'm sorry. There's not a lot I can do. I don't know. Don't even know where it's coming from. But uh, I, I'm trying to make it better. Um, and now it's getting louder. Uh, the next thing, uh, the thing about pinball tables is they look really good on top, but they look even cooler underneath, which is a good thing because you're going to see that a lot. Uh, you don't buy a pinball table to play the pinball game. You buy the pinball table to uh, fix it as much as you can. And, you know, the ability to fix problems is a major issue. I've been in conventions where we didn't have a fix-it guy. And so I had to go in and I had to do what I knew, which was very basic, and, you know, help out as best I could. And it was chaotic at times and even frustrating because, you know, if something breaks down and the only person there only knows how to do, you know, turn it off and turn it back on again... That's all that can be done. And you have to wait for somebody to come in and, and do more. And that that's always a frustrating thing. So you need to be able to fix the problems. There, or at least they need to have people who know how to fix the problems. That orange shirt that you see in that picture is actually uh, the specific assigned uh, shirt for those people who are called medics at the uh, arcade shows. And their specific assignment is to just go out and fix machines. They also need to be organized, and here's a bunch of machines uh, stacked up, and although they've just come in, they've all come in at a specific order so that when they come out or when they go back into the truck, they can be delivered at a specific route. 
uh, and it's it's all very, very organized. They go, okay, we're going here, we're going here, we're going here. We need this to be here, we need this to be here. And, you know, every little bit needs to be organized and ready. Uh, in the middle of a convention, you will see this little area where the organizers just meet, and they're constantly making sure everything is sa safe, and they've all prepped every little bit so that they can get things done very quickly. And uh, even if you're in a small part of that convention, you are trying to make sure that everybody sees or that everything is ready as soon as somebody calls. And then you have to have time for the project. And that doesn't sound like a lot to you, but a convention means you're basically going to work for 24 hours for the next oh, six days. Um, for the Northwest Pinball and Arcade Show, this is actually a special meal. Uh, Saturday mornings, they always have they serve food for all the the staff or for all the the people who are uh, volunteering there. And that's great food, and I really enjoy it. Um, but everybody is there because not just because of the food, but because they've been doing this every morning. They've been showing up five o'clock in the morning to make sure everything's working and then they get everything working and they then they you know maneuver stuff and make sure uh all the uh, things are arranged and then they keep working at the show when it opens and after it closes they have to turn off every machine they have to make sure you know whatever they can't fix they've got to write notes for and you know they've got to send somebody out to some pl spot i've had to go do deliveries and stuff like that so you're basically living at this convention center for, you know, a week. And I've heard stories of people who only had three or four hours of sleep every night because that's all they could get because of all the work they've done. And I gotta admit to you, I've done it a couple of times. I'm not proud of that. And the, the reality is this kind of work and everything we've talked about has a high burnout rate. So you have to uh, be ready to uh, move and do things, even though, you know, there's there's this chance that your body or your mind is just going to be like, nope, can't do it anymore. Just sit down. I've, I've just, I've, I'm done. And then you have to be willing to be idiots. <laughs> and I was trying to find some other picture. I really was. But uh, these are the guys I actually work with at the Northwest Pinball and Arcade Show. And Ben's pose. <laughs> Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, you've got to be willing to be idiots. You've got to be willing to make mistakes, to screw up, to do all the things that you said you wouldn't do. Because when you start up a show, you're not going to do it perfectly, which is why you start small. So then you know what your mistakes are and you can fix them quickly. And, you know, how you, and it helps you adjust very, very well as your uh, show grows. Whereas, you know, when I was thrown in, it was like a lot of people and I had to kind of play catch up a lot. But uh, you've got to be willing to screw up, to have to uh, admit your faults. You have to be willing to be idiots and seem as kind of stupid because sometimes all you can do is make a decision. And it might be a bad decision, but somebody had to make a decision. Like you, you don't have any good choices, so you have to choose amongst the bad. And so, you know, you have to be willing to be idiots in front of other people. In the same idea, you have to be willing to look weird. This is uh, Dan. He promotes uh, the Northwest Pinball and Arcade Show, and he specifically bought this suit so that people would take pictures of him. You have to be willing to go out and, you know, evangelize your idea. And if you, if you want to spread this idea, you can't just, you know, hand out flyers. You have to go and tell people, oh, we've got this show, and you've got to show excitement for it. Like, oh my gosh, we've got to, got, we're going to have so many cool games. Uh, that's what I basically do when I go to the Emerald City Comic Con is I just stand outside the door and I hand out flyers. But really what I'm doing is I'm telling people to go in, and if they look excited when they're coming out, I hand them a flyer. And I go, okay, you've got to try this show. We've got like 400 plus arcade games. Oh, you're going to love it. And I'm fully aware that I look weird. And, you know, I, I'm kind of, I'm tired. I've given up a ton of my time and I've done all this stuff. And yet I'm willing to be there and I'm willing to kind of be seen as a bit odd because I'm, I'm promoting this show. And you got to do this so that people who are interested can be found. So that, you know, that 
inner circle can spread to the outer circles so that uh, it, it becomes a common thing eventually. And that's kind of what the founders of most uh, conventions are like. And, you know, basically put, that's going to be the, the people who keep the show running even years after. And uh, honestly, uh, the shows I've worked in, they've had burnout They've had burnouts uh, where people were just like, I can't do this anymore. And they hand it over to somebody else. And that person, their entire goal is the same as the founders. And they're going to be just like the founders, only now they've got a lot of energy. And they're willing to do things. So it, it's a fascinating thing, but you have to kind of look at it correctly. And uh, next uh, episode, we're going to talk about the financial setup for a convention. And you have to be willing to accept that this costs a lot of money. This is one of those cases where, yeah, you've got to be an idiot. Uh, you're, you're going to look kind of weird when you explain to people exactly what you're doing because the cost of a convention, if you want to do a full convention, is the same as a full house. And I mean that in a literal, in a literal case. These conventions can cost hundreds of thousands to even millions of dollars. So, you know, you got to be willing to fork out over the money to do it. So I will catch you all Wednesday, and I hope uh, everything here is seen as relevant. Bye now.